I'm so excited to be back for a whole year of brand new videos. I have so many ideas and things that I want to create, so I really can't wait to get started. For the first video of the year, I thought we would dive into a topic that I get asked about every day, which is how to take sharp photos. As you know, I love shooting with a shallow depth of field, usually using the widest aperture available, such as f1.2 on my 85mm or 1.4 on my 35mm. And I also love capturing movement in my portraits as well. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you what my focus settings on my camera are and some tips and tricks on how you can achieve these results at your next photo shoot. First things first are my camera settings. So I have my camera set on single point autofocus, one shot focus mode, and I use the shutter to lock off my focus. And throughout this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what each of those things mean and how you can apply that to your own photography. My first tip is to use single point autofocus and get into the habit of using your focus points while taking photos. For me, when taking a portrait, the eyes are the most important part, so I always want them to be the main focus of the image. If you use a large focus area, you may get the face in focus. However, you don't have full control as to where exactly it's focusing on the face. So usually you'll get focus on the nose or the chin or pretty much whatever's the closest thing to the lens. By using single point AF, it means that you tell your camera exactly where you want it to focus, leading to more accurate results. A simple tip that I keep in mind is that I put the focus point directly on someone's face if I'm capturing a mid or full length portrait. And then I put the focus point directly on someone's eye, usually the one closest to the camera if I'm shooting a close up portrait. For example, let's say I wanna take a photo of this flower, but I want it to be at the very top of the frame. If I have my focus point set at the center, lock off my focus and recompose, by the time the flower is at the very top, it will have shifted out of focus as the distance between the flower and my lens is now different. A better way to do this is if you compose the shot how you want it, and then put the focus point on your subject. This ensures that you'll get sharp photos as you're not shifting your camera and your lens around. My second tip is locking in focus. Now that you've set your focus point comes how to lock it in when you're taking a photo. So there are two methods that you can use to do this. The first one is back button focusing and the second one is half pressing your shutter down. I truly believe that whichever one you choose really comes down to personal preference and what suits you more as a photographer. I personally like to use the shutter button method and I would highly recommend for you guys to go out and try both just to see which one you prefer and what suits you more. Something to keep in mind when you're locking off focus is that the smaller shift between you or your subject forwards or backwards or to the side can cause your photo to be out of focus. So a couple of tips that I have that you can use to avoid this are to keep the time between locking off your focus and taking the photo as small as possible. This will ensure that there's not too much time for you or your subject to move around while you're taking photos and will help achieve sharper results. And another tip is to take a handful of photos in each location or for each photo that you wanna capture. Even though I've been shooting with a shallow depth of field for many years now, I still like to take a few extra photos just in case and just to make sure I have one that's super tack shop. Next up is choosing which focus mode to use. Now this is where it might get a little bit complicated as I always have my camera set to one shot. When I'm shooting fashion photography, travel, weddings, movement shoots with Christina, I always have my camera set to one shot. And the reason for this is because I find it can be a little bit more accurate than servo modes. Typically, when photographing movement, you should set your camera to AI servo as it tracks movement within the focus point that you selected, making it a little bit easier and faster to capture movement. However, back when I used to use the Canon 5D Mark II, I found that the servo modes weren't as accurate or reliable as they are now. While it would track my subject, I would find that sometimes it would shift out of focus the split second before I would press the shutter, resulting in an out of focus photo. 
So I decided to switch to one shot as I have full control over when the focus is locked off before I take a photo. Focus modes on DSLRs are a really big topic so please let me know down in the comments if you guys would like to see a video from me explaining what all the focus modes are and when you should use them. Just like back button focus I would definitely recommend to go out with your camera and try out all the different focus modes and just experiment with them and see what they do. You might have a really great camera like the Sony a7 III or the Canon 5D Mark IV where the servo modes work amazingly so you would be able to use that for your movement shoots. Or you might be like me 10 years ago and are using something where the servo modes aren't as reliable so you might prefer to use something different. So those are some of the technical aspects of focusing with your camera but in order to get sharp photos every time you do a photo shoot you really really need to get out there and practice. So here are a couple of things that you can try to get better and improve with your focusing. You can start small by practicing on objects around your house. I find that plants are a really great place to start because they have depth to the leaves and you can choose where your focus point is on that plant. The next one is to try using a high aperture. If you want to get photos at 1.2 but you find that you're really struggling to get focus and the majority of your shots are out of focus, just bump up your aperture to something a little bit Bit higher such as f 2.8 and practice with that first. When you find that you're getting the majority of those shots in focus then bump it down a little bit more to something like f2, practice again when you're getting those shots all in focus then you can use the widest aperture that you have. And last but not least you can also double check your sharpness while you're taking photos. There's no harm in asking your model or your subject to just wait for a couple of seconds when you finish shooting in a particular location just so you can have a flick through on the back of your camera and zoom into some of the shots that you really like just to double check that they're sharp. Well I really hope this video helped you guys out. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything and I would also love to hear what your favorite focusing modes are as well because I really love to know how other photographers work. If you enjoyed this video you might like to watch this video about how to pose people who are not models. You can practice all these new focusing techniques on a family member and use this video on how to pose them to get beautiful photos of them. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single Wednesday and I will see you all next time. Bye!